Hammond, hey, welcome well. to the show. How are thank you going? You. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Thanks good. for having me. I really appreciate That's it. That's all right. Glad to have you here. So, Hammond, we're going to fire off, start with a few questions. First, I just want to ask, nice footwear. <laughs> were you at the beach this morning or what was going on? Yeah, look, the morning always start with um, rituals. Yes. And so, uh, I'm a big believer, you know, for ups and downs in life, like everyone has. Yes. That our rituals keep us up, you yes. know. And we set ourselves up to win. Um, so every morning, barefoot, you've all heard about grounding. Yes. And uh, I like that. You know, it's, it's freedom. When I was in my younger days, wearing shoes all the time and a tie and everything else, I love the freedom of not having anything on your feet, but also the fact that I'm grounding. So, yes. Uh, yeah, I have no, no shoes. Yeah. No, I like that. Fair enough. That, well, that was one of the questions. So you're fired off. Look, I can relate to that, you know, not having a war time, suit and all that sort of stuff, going to school. So, yeah, getting in touch with nature, that's important. Yes. All right, so just a few questions to uh, loosen up the mood. Would you be fluent in all languages or be able to play all instruments? What's more important to you? Oh, what's more important? Um, if you could. Yeah. I think what's important to me is uh, what makes me happy. So communication is really important. So I'm content with being communicating in English really well. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents, my, my dad was born in India, we're Indian. I was born in Africa. Yes. Um, I speak uh, Gujarati, that's uh, Northern Indian. Yeah. Uh, I'm from the Gujarat region, uh, but I speak well enough. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, playing an instrument, uh, uh, it doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really, uh, I think as long as happiness appeals more to me than... And you'd rather be able to communicate to a number of people across the world to be able to share that sort of yeah, happiness. Yeah, yeah. I, I would get translators. And <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yes. All right. Um, if you were a vegetable, what would you be and why? If I was a vegetable, which vegetable would I be and uh, why? Um, Just a few fun ones to start with. <laughs> oh. Oh, actually, I love figs. Yeah? Well, oh, I love okay. figs. Figs are beautiful. They're, yeah, yeah. they're sweet. Yes. They're... But is fig a fruit or a vegetable? Uh, oh, it's a fruit. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's all right. Technicality, but look, we'll let you have it. That's <laughs> fine. All right. We'll move on to the next one. If you could have one superpower or magical power, what would it be? What would it be? Oh, to help fly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love to fly. Grounding and in the air. That's oh, yeah. Kind of, that's... yeah. I see, I see the thing. All right, if you were a child prodigy, what skill would you want to have? Or what would you wish you could have had? I believe that everyone has a skill or a genius. Yes. And I think it's about appreciating what we're great at and doing more of that. Yep. So I love communicating with people. I love coaching. Um, energy of giving. So, yeah, I'm content with whatever's coming, whatever's flowing through me in this, okay. in this, in this time. Great. <laughs> we could probably be one of the only people to say that that I've interviewed, but no, it's good. Okay, so last fun one. Oh no, we've answered that first interview in the morning. What excites you right now? What excites me? Yes. Um, life. And specifically, what we're doing with you know the whole lot of goodness yes. and providing scholarships for youth yes and just waking up every day and being challenged and how will we achieve our outcome of 10,000 scholarships by 2020 yes because if you ask me you know how are you going to do this I'm not quite sure uh, I know the why and yep. why we're doing it and so every day it's like you wake up and there's a, it's like you, you, you wake up and you know that you're, you're close to the peak, but the peak is still quite high up. Yeah. And you just keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. And so hence, waking up and having those rituals to recalibrate yourself. Because every, at the end of every day, there's times we know at the end of the day and I feel, why am I doing this? Yes. You know, and it, it, is it worth it? But that's the end of the day, right? The work, yeah. Yeah, and then you, 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 you wake up in the morning again, and you remind yourself why you re-energized, recalibrated, refocused. Yeah. So that's really exciting right now. It's 
what's possible. Yes. And I think it's testing the limits of what's possible. So tell me more about a whole lot of goodness. Yeah. Um, all this came about through following my heart. And, you know, through this journey of when I was younger, all I wanted to do was be a pharmacist. That's all I wanted to do, you know, and yep. um, became a pharmacist. And then I love communicating with people and helping them. But I quickly realized that uh, there's a place for medication, but relying on it and not doing anything for yourself is not a great space to be in. So I was literally just giving out medication and primarily for people who, who either didn't know what to do or got in the system. So you're labeled and medicated yep. in a way. Um, but if they're diabetic, they didn't want to change their diet or they didn't want to change their lifestyle or make better choices or be more active. Yes. And so that was frustrating because then you're just helping them to stay there. You're not really helping them to, to break through that. Yeah. And uh, you know, my mother got diagnosed with breast cancer from the medication I was dispensing for her. And she asked me two years before, is it safe to take? And I said, oh, the benefits outweigh the risks. Yeah. So two years after the World Women's Study came out and showed that HRT you know, should be uh, prescribed with caution and not just given out as it was really in those really. days. Yeah, really. And so um, I was like, what have I done? And thinking about the consequences of my actions and everything else. So I stepped away from that. And part of the challenge of stepping away from knowing in your heart what's right and getting in your head is in your head, you kind of lie to yourself like this is the way it should be. Because mm. I believe I've been brought up like, and I, you know, you've got to have an education, you've got to have a job, you've got to be able to provide. And so you stay in this status quo of being a pharmacist, being whatever it is you relate, you know, and because you're earning a living. So there's a lot of fear around that, stepping away from that. Yeah. And you get a lot of recognition because people are often ask, hey, um, you know, so what do you do for work? So, oh, I, I, and then you have, I am a pharmacist, you're giving them your, your label. Yeah. And then you have your identity around that. So, and that creates a lot of challenges, right? Because you stay in this, you create the fence around, that's it, you know, that's it. So breaking through and, you know, into, away from that was, was tough. So literally it was a question of, okay, do you stay in your head? And I say, if you stay in your head, you lie to yourself, or do you go to your heart and you tell yourself the truth? Yeah. Now, both create pain, because when you, when, you, when you stay in your head and you don't enjoy what you're doing and you feel, oh, something's not right here, unless you can change the whole system, it's gonna be tough, right? So you've gotta kind of stay in the system in a way or you can follow your heart and try and change the system. But for me, I wanted to be out of that. I wanted to be out of that environment. And so, I, but by lying to myself and getting in my head, it was causing me pain and suffering because I didn't know who to talk to. And telling the truth and going to my parents saying, well, you took me to university, my business partner, you know, that, you know, having those well, conversations. Yeah, yeah you, you're disappointing them and you, you feel pain. So there's pain either way. You either stay, do nothing, you're in pain. You tell the truth, you're in pain. Yeah. But what I found was very quickly over time is that uh, here uh, the pain creates suffering not only for yourself but for others around you. Because you might be around people that you care about and if they're in pain and they're not happy, you feel, are they okay? And you kind of create suffering for you too, right? So uh, it's suffering for you and suffering for people around you. But when you tell the truth, you create uh, pain initially, but you, you break through your your... your you grow, right? By having a conversation you need to have with yourself and with others. Yeah. And then when you tell the truth, it not only sets you free, but sets everyone else free because you're happy now. Yeah. And I think the key thing for me is environment. Environment creates, you know, if you're in an environment that's nurturing, that you, you love being in, it brings out the best in you. Yeah. And so what happened was by moving environment, not only my work environment, but actually moved countries, right? Yeah. We moved from England to Australia. I mean, Australia is, you know, uh, for people watching this, it's just a beautiful place. You know, you've got the sunshine, you yeah. have, it's, it's, like going back in, it's like going back in time, right, in a way. Yes. Uh, we go back to... Um, Especially first person. Yeah, like going back to some of those values where people are there to help you, not because they want something from you, but they genuinely want to help 
you, you know, yeah. to see you grow, to see you succeed. They know you come to a new country and they kind of know in a way how it feels, you know, and, and so on, right? Yeah, that's small so, country town vibes. So. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. So I love the environment and obviously we took over Nature's Harvest, a health food store, uh, which we renovated. We started serving these trimming lattes and then uh, it became very popular. And then in 2016, a young man shared his story of being suicidal at the age of 13, but he said he couldn't stop smiling after he got scholarship to a camp. And so when he shared that, I was like, wow, I had goosebumps when he was talking to me. And every young person we spoke to who'd been to the camp said, oh, I realize there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. You know, I realize um, problems are part of life. And then so my realization was that, you know, rather than labeling and, uh, or labeling and counseling, labeling, medicating, it's like, well, once they, once people know that there's nothing wrong with me, you can work things out yourself, and you're set free, right? Yeah. So, the question was, how can we do even more of this? And we have this great product, we're less distributed to provide scholarships for youth, and then the whole lot of goodness goes back to the farmers and working with organic farmers and supporting them. Um, uh, we work with a cooperative of organic farmers. Uh, and seeing their community grow, for them to provide for their children, for their family, and getting a fair price is really important. Then right now we're working with an amazing organization called Westcare, based in here in Western Australia, and they provide scholarships for people who may not be able to get jobs otherwise, you know, have disabilities. So we have people packing our products who are really happy doing, love what they're doing. Uh, they're in a great environment, they've got a job, you know, and that energy, we're a great. I'm a great believer of energy. You know, yes. you go and walk into a place, and there's someone just uh, something just uh, died here or something. Yeah, or yeah. You go into a place, and think, wow, there's something about this place I love being here. Yeah. And so that vibe in that in that space is that is about wow, happiness, and you know, and we love that. So, and the association about that being a whole part of goodness, redefining profit. It's not about what can I get, get, get. The commercialization of what's happening right now is everyone's. You know, it's all about getting. It's like you're selling, and, and what are your values? I mean, there's some some uh, organizations, you know, out there selling everything from tobacco to alcohol to health foods. I mean, it doesn't quite make sense to me, right? So, what are your values? Well, the values is we got to make money, yeah, all right. And then let's 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 just our profit has to be really high, yeah. But then at the detriment of the farmers sometimes, at the detriment of, you know, sometimes you got all these tills now, right, which are automated. You have to go and do your own thing. We employ less people. And I suppose you could argue, oh, it's the market and everything else, but it's also about what are the consequences of selling junk food? What are the consequences of, uh, you know, you go into petrol station these days and the environment is like, if you're really hungry, you're stuffed. Unless you're planned and you've got some food with you, you're like, what do I eat? Well, you haven't got many healthy choices, right? Yeah. So the whole lot of goodness is about providing healthy choices too. Um, knowing it's clean, it's organic, provide, supporting the farmers, getting it packed by people who perhaps you know, are, are, are happy to, right? Yes. And the icing on the cake, I suppose, is that we're giving back to youth, the future of our of, of our of our country, of the world, right? Yeah. Who are growing up believing in themselves that you know what? It's not. This isn't about being in the system. It's about believing in myself, and bringing out those qualities within them. And I said earlier, everyone has a genius. And what's their genius? What are they amazing at? Um, and bringing out more of that, rather than believing, you know, looking at someone else saying, oh look, I'm not good enough. No, you are good enough, what are you great at? Yeah. And doing more of that. And I think once we bring out the genius in every single young person, and allow the space for them to bring that out, I think magic will happen even more in our communities, right? And you won't see those stats of 10% of Australian youth, and youth around the world, right, are classed as being depressed, suicidal, self-harm, and all this stuff, it's terrible. Yeah. And you keep hearing about house prices, you keep hearing about share prices, you keep hearing about iron ore prices. But what's most important, right? And this is real life, real People. human beings. People, yeah. And getting them in getting them and just labeling them and giving them medication and putting whatever, that's not the answer. And you have this amazing foundation called Magic Moments Foundation, uh, who runs these camps, Magic Moments Youth Leadership and Business Summit. And you can have a look at our website, you know, trimericlattemix.com, and uh, you know the videos there of the camp, uh, of the speakers, of the participants, and we've been there and seen these amazing human beings right come together, 
and you see magic happen, right? And you see their confidence level, you know, rise. You see their self worth rise. You see them being happy, and uh, that's what that's what really I get up every morning and feel compelled. It's a duty of care every human being to go out there and you know contribute to making society better. You know, do whatever they can. You know, do whatever they can. So, so that's your story. What was your aha moment? What was the moment where you were like, "This is it. This is what I want to be. This is the path I want to be going down." Yeah. Look, a lot of people say, you know, I'm bored. I don't have a purpose. I'm not sure what my purpose is, and so on. And I think um, it's not like this is your purpose. I believe that if you follow your heart, and because if you're what I mean by that, for some people think, what does it mean by follow your heart? Well, you have this feeling when something's not right, and you have a feeling when you know something is needs to change, or, or you need to have that conversation, or, or so on. So I think it's about you know when we bought Nature's Harvest, initially it was like my wife was going to bring a commercial kitchen, right? Yeah. And uh, it was a health food store started in the eighties uh, by an American family. And so I remember going in there many years ago and saying, wow, this place up for sale, I'd love to buy it because it's got so much potential and it's got such, it's such a beautiful space. And so initially we got in our head and we were like, all these reasons why this isn't going to work. And then I woke up that in the clarity of early morning, you know, it's a time people say you should meditate like four in the morning, five in the morning. Yeah. And the clarity of knowing, wow, this is such a great opportunity to create a space for, for some healthy foods, and you know, um, workshops and all these things kind of came to my mind, and, and we, we went and I followed my heart. Yeah. And then, so if I hadn't done that, uh, you know, and then if I hadn't followed my heart, my head was about should we renovate or not? Because no one had invested any money in that store since the 80s. It's just been kind of run down, if you want to call it, because run, not run down, but you know, it was just old, and there was this like vinyl floor, and yeah. we knew there was a wooden jar, a beautiful floor underneath, right? And so do we invest or not? And you get in fear, or, you know, we were like, no, follow up my heart again, you know? Yes. And at that time, the loan hadn't even come through and I'd already gone with the builders and everything else. I'm not asking viewers to do this, but you know, I was just following my heart and I've become a strong believer that it's okay, it's gonna work out. Yes. You just gotta have trust and faith. It's gonna work out, but obviously be intelligent about it too. And so, you know, I did loan, did come through, but I followed my heart through. I, I met some amazing people architects, designers, and so on. Um, and we created a beautiful space. And because we followed our heart and we had the, the coffee bar there, we started serving turmeric lattes. And then so now we're serving turmeric lattes and they became very popular. And then we met this young man, you know, he shared his story. And then we followed our heart again and compelled. We knew in our heart there was the right thing to do. In our head was like, it's too hard, all these other things to do. The heart was saying, no, this is the right thing to do. Yep. So you see how the purpose evolves. It's kind of le life's leading you towards a calling, maybe or a, or something like one of. We have three mantras, right? Never ever give up. A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles, and everything happens for the good. I love that. That's great. And so, that grateful heart is a magnet for miracles yep. is perhaps what I'm talking about because when you follow your heart. You're, 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 you're following your passion, you're, you're falling in love with life. Yes. Again. Yeah. Right? You're trusting, even though you can't necessarily see the outcome or there's a hurdle, you're just going, no, this is the right way to go. Yeah. And, and then it just keeps delivering. Yeah. For yeah. You. It's like people come into your life, opportunities come into your life, and you think, how did that, how did that happen? You no. Know? And I remember being in, um, you know, initially in the early days, we um, uh, a journalist interviewed us, and we said we're going to raise a million dollars for this foundation. And I didn't have a clue how. It was just I put it out there. And in fact, it was someday. It was like someday in the future. But for me, it was like you know, five, ten, twenty years time, whatever. Right? Yeah. She wrote in the next twelve months, and I haven't said that. But when she wrote that, and I read it, I picked up the phone to get her to change it. But my heart was like, no, it's there for a reason. Everything happens for the good. Yes. I mean, I didn't. I didn't have that mantra then, but now look, look, well, it would happen for the good. Yep. And I was like, well, why not? And that gave us the, the, the energy to go out there and work even harder or be even more focused and make it happen. Yep. So we grew very quickly. 
And then when we watched the movie Lion, in the movie Lion, if you haven't seen it, it's an amazing film. Uh, there's a, a stat in there that 80,000 kids go missing in India every year. And before we took over Nature's Harvest and my transition as a, far, you know, as a pharmacist here, uh, formed a coaching company called Coach26. And our vision statement is to positively inspire over 20 million people by 2020. And our mission to bring to life the magnificence in people. I have a clue how, but I kept saying it again and again and again. Yeah, possibly. And, yeah, yeah. And, and so I was like, well, what if you raise 20 million by 2020 and they equate to 10,000 scholarships, right? And so that we started thinking about, well, we need to now look outside just of Australia and look at the world. And so we look at exporting and so on. So I was in the US and um, I was in Austin and, I, and we have an amazing team member called Taylor Burke and I in our team. And she's in the US, you know, and I have a consultant called um, uh, uh, Janet, Janet Chaikin and I'm meeting her for the first time. So I'm in uh, Austin, I'm in the hotel and the tab stops you know, the, the hot water runs really fast and I couldn't shut it. And I, I had to kind of mess about with the tap. And I, I noticed that I was getting angry and frustrated. And then I had to stop myself and, and remind myself that it's easy to be grateful when everything's going, things going well. It's not easy to be grateful when things aren't going so well. Yeah. So, um, and I thought, oh, just stop, stop. And think about me getting angry and I, another part of me started coming out and thinking about how I'm going to complain to the hotel. I'm going to write them a re bad review. And I'm like, hold on, what, what, what part of me is coming out? Don't be that guy. Yeah, don't be that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I breathe, all right? And then um, just make the call and tell the reception to fix it. That's what I did. Yeah. And then I got in, a, in an Uber and I, I was running late. So we make things up in our head, right? Yep. So I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be late. What is she going to think of me? And all this stuff, and I'm like, hey, just breathe, just be grateful, just be here now, you know, be here, be present. And when I got there, I was like, Janet, I'm so, uh, first time meeting her face to face, I'm so, I'm so sorry to be late. She goes, no, Henry, we got half an hour. Yeah. And I said, oh, great. She goes, grab some breakfast. And um, so I'm eating at the Whole Foods at the, at the, at the you know, the, the, the main flagship store. Yeah. And uh, our products being sampled at the um, Global Park, which is basically where all the decision makers are right upstairs and I thought great and that was a miracle in itself you know yes. and it was a great opportunity so I'm grabbing breakfast I come back to Janet and she's talking to this big guy and she introduces me to him and she goes Hannah this is Walter and I said hi Walter nice to meet you and so Walter says oh Janet tells me she's uh, uh, helping you get your product in the US and I said that's right and I said would you like to know what our mantra is and he goes yeah sure and I said a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles and he said I like that and um, he said, tell me about your product. So I did. He said, you have a card. And when you need something, so oftentimes, you know, you don't have the card. So yeah. I'm messing around my bag trying to find this card. And I give it to him like this. And he says, we're not in Japan. Just stick it in the basket. I said, sure. So I kind of put it in the basket. <laughs> and then um, he took his camera, his, uh, you know, video camera, his phone out. And he started videoing me. And I'm like, put me on the spot. And I'm, what do you want me to say? And he said, that grateful thing. And, and I looked at the camera again. And I said, a, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. And he looked at Janet and he said, I'll send a copy to Jed. And he you know, said bye and he went. And Janet said, do you know who that was? And I said, no. She goes, that was Walter Rob. He's the CEO of Whole Foods Market who just retired. I said, you're kidding me. I said, who's Jeff? She goes, Jeff Tutter, who's just taken on your product at Allegro. And I said, well, that's a miracle too. Yeah. And I started thinking about the sequence of events that happened that morning. And I said to Janet, if I hadn't been held up by the tap or the traffic jam, we would never have met him. Yeah. Because he just happened to be shopping in Whole Foods, right? Yeah. And Janet knew him because she worked for him before. Yeah. And I said, you know, everything happens for the good. A grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. And never ever give up. <laughs> yes. Perfect. I love that. Awesome story. Um so you spoke about your early childhood and you lived in your parents born in India. Yeah. And you were born in Africa. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, so my uh, dad was born in Africa. My mom was born in Zambia. Uh, sorry, in, uh, in uh, Tanzania. Yes. I was born in Zambia. Yeah. Um, my dad had a bit of a tough time you know, when he was uh, younger. You know, his dad passed away when he was like two or three years old. Yeah. Um, he had, uh, you know, like so many siblings, seven siblings or whatever. 
And so he was working, he never really went to school. His joke was he, he kind of cycled past school. Yeah. So many he was like 10, uh, I think eight or nine or 10, you know, he was, he was working. So he really worked all his life. Yeah. Uh, he said he didn't have money at times, you know, he was uh, you know, on the streets, um, uh, you know, sometimes he had money for food, sometimes he did, yeah. but he just worked hard. And so he was very, and, and you know, it's funny you ask that because anytime I've been to workshops, they always talk about leaving a legacy. And this conversation about a whole lot of goodness is about leaving a legacy. Yep. And I never really understood what that meant. And when we arrived in Australia in 2009, my uh, wife said to me, my cousin's here from Kenya, and she just moved here, we've got to go meet her. I said, yeah, absolutely. So we go there, we're, we're having, you know, we're sitting all together, and my parents having tea and all this stuff. And uh, her cousin's mother-in-law uh, started speaking to my dad and asking him all these questions about where are you from India, you know, and you know, what did you do there, do you know this person, and so on. At one point, my dad said, oh, that was my, that's my older brother. Right. And he goes, that's my other brother. And then she said, you don't know who I am. And they, you know, he was tearing up, she was tearing up, and I was like, what's going on? And my dad told me this story, which I've never heard before. And he said that one time, you know, while he was there, um, he, uh, he was going through his town, and this guy offered him, he was like 17, 18 years old, and offered him a job. And in India, they take up every nook and cranny, right? Yeah. So there's like a small space, tiny, from where you are to where I am, right? And there's two sewing machines. And this guy says to him, like, um, I heard you've been learning tailoring, and he's been doing an apprenticeship for tailoring since like 13 or something. And he said, yeah. And he said, okay, well, why don't you operate one of the sewing machines, I'll operate the other. If we get four shirts, I make two, you make two. And he basically said, you keep the profit. So he didn't, yeah. he didn't charge him any rent, he didn't take any money from him, he just did it from the kindness of his eyes. So like a random act of kindness, wow. right? And uh, yeah, and, it, and my dad said, I was earning 30 times the amount of money I was earning in a day. Yeah. And so it gave him confidence. It gave him money that he never had before, right? It was coming into his life. Yeah. And so over that, after that one year, he moved on and then eventually his brothers were in Africa and that's when he moved to Zambia. Yeah. So, and then, you know, eventually they started up a factory and had 70 people working for them and they moved to England, right? Wow. Yeah. So the turning point in a way was that opportunity of goodness that he had from this man. Yeah. So when, Random. My wife's yeah. So when my wife's uh, cousin sister's mother-in-law said, "You don't know who I am," it was her father who had helped my dad. Wow! So when we were there, I was like, "This, yeah. What are the chances of that happening?" Yeah. Right? And I never knew the story. And then I started. I'm talking about him right now, and he's not even here. Then I started thinking about understanding what it meant to leave a legacy, because you can leave a house or money. But money comes, money goes, right? But when you leave an act of kindness, something that empowers someone else to go off and they have the power to then be confident, yeah. to believe in themselves. And that's what basically my dad took away from that experience, yeah. was that I can do this, you know? It's got infinite power. That's right. Yeah. And so that was the greatest gift you can give anybody. And I think that that stayed with me for, and it still stayed with me in my heart about the power of giving. Yep. And that guy's not even here today and we're talking about him. And so if you look in history, there are some amazing human beings, right, who've given their lives to communities or countries that has left a legacy for others to enjoy and for their life to be better. So it's about good for me, good for others, and good for the greater good. Yep. It's not about not good for me, not good for others, and not good for the greater good. So, so is, that, just, is that what you want to be remembered by? Like, so I, I really, really don't care if people remember me per se, or you know, my wife, or anything else. Yeah. It's really about knowing that the whole lot of goodness, and, or if they do remember us, it's really about remembering this part of our life where it's about giving back. Yeah. 